this video, we're going to look at the component lifecycle of React components. Now, whenever a component gets rendered to the DOM, certain things happen before it's rendering and after it's rendering. And these are known as the component lifecycle and its methods. A little bit of terminology just before we get started. In React, when a component is added to the DOM, it's called mounting. And when a component is removed from the DOM, it's called unmounting. Whenever a component is rendered to the DOM, it's mounted to the DOM. And when it's taken out of the DOM, it's unmounted. I've got my simple index.html here. It's currently blank. I've got my three scripts included. Let's go ahead and create a simple component so we can look at the lifecycle methods of a React component. Go ahead and create the display name of your component. I'm going to call mine simply lifecycle component. And of course, using the React library and the create class method, we're going to create our component. All it's going to do is, of course, implement the render method, which takes a function. And all we're going to do in this is simply return a button with an onClick function, which will be this dot increment. We've seen this before, of course. And inside of the text of this button will be this dot state dot count. And we know what that's going to do. So obviously a simple button that whenever we click it, the count updates. Close that off. And of course, we're going to render this to the DOM using the React DOM library, which, as you know, takes a what and a where. So our what is going to be our lifecycle component, and the where is going to be our app document get element by ID of app. Okay. Before we look at the lifecycle methods of a component, we need to implement our increment method. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So increment, which of course is a function, and we're simply going to update the state. So this dot set state. I'm going to set the state of our count, which we're going to do in a second. We're going to update it to this dot state dot count plus one. The lifecycle methods of a component. We've actually seen two of these already. Now, when you create a class using the react.create class, you pass in an object, which you know already. So this here, this is our object. And this object has object specifications. So you essentially say, Right, when this component gets rendered to the DOM, I want it to have a state of count. I want that count to be zero, or I want it to have a property of name and Tim. And of course you do that using get default props and get initial state. Both of these are only called once and both happen before our component is rendered. So before our component gets mounted to the DOM. In this video, I'm going to use comments within the component to show you the order that these methods happen and whether they happen before or after our component is rendered to the DOM. And I'm going to put the ones that happen before, before the render method, and the ones that happen after, after. Just to make it really clear about the order. So the first thing that happens, so number one, and this is called once. Okay, and this happens before our component is rendered, is get default props, which we've seen before. Of course, is a function. Now we're not going to have any default properties in this component, 
because we don't need them. What I am going to do is console.log that we are getting our default properties. So we'll see exactly when this happens and the order it happens. The next thing that happens is another method we've seen before. So it's the second thing. It's also only called once and it also happens before our component is rendered is get initial state. Which again is a function. And in this function, we're simply going to return the object, which is going to be our initial state, and it's going to be count of zero. So you can imagine here that before our component gets rendered, it has to do two things. It has to get default properties, if there are any, and it has to set the initial state. If you look at our button here, we are actually using the state of the object. So if we didn't get our initial state before our object was rendered, then this would be undefined and we get an error. And the same would occur if we had properties on our component. Which means that both these methods need to happen before our component is rendered to the DOM. I'm going to go ahead and put a console.log in our get initial state, getting our initial state, just so we can see when that happens as well. Save this. I'm going to go ahead and look in the browser and check it out. We've got our button here, which increments every time we click it which is great. If we open up developer tools, we will see that the first thing that happens is we get our default properties. We are then getting our initial states, which is great. So the first thing that happens, get default properties, then we get our initial state. The next method that happens is called component will mount. So number three, again, this is called once and this happens before our component is rendered. So component will mount. Gain is simply a function and don't forget the comma. Now component will mount does not have access to the DOM but it does have access to the props and the state. I'm gonna go ahead and console.log component is mounting. So obviously the name implies that it's happening before our component is mounted, so before the render method, and we will see that in a second. One thing I'm gonna do is console.log this.state and console.log this.props. We will see that these are available in the component will mount. Let's check that out in the browser. There we go. So the first thing that happens, get our default properties. We then get our initial state. Our component is getting ready to get mounted then. So this is component will mount. And we can see that this is our state and this is our properties, which is great. And you'll notice that if I increment the count, none of these things happen again. They all get called just once, which is exactly what we want and exactly what we expect. The next thing to occur in our components lifecycle is the render method, which we've seen before and we've used lots of times. I'm actually gonna go ahead and move the increment method to the top here, just so it's not a part of our, our list. So this is number four, our render method. So number four, and this happens 
whenever our component changes. So happens whenever our component changes. And I'm going to console.log that our component is rendered. Save that and head on back over to the browser. Again, we've got the getting default props, our initial state, the component is mounting, and then component is rendered. And if we increment the count, you'll notice that component is rendered happens again. And this is because every time we update the state, so every time we click and we call this dot increment, the state gets updated. The virtual DOM looks at the state, looks at the count property and goes, oh, that's updated. I need to re-render the component. I need to re-render that value. Call the render method. And that's what happens. So whenever we click on that, the component gets rendered. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the state and the property console.logs because we know that happens now and we don't need those there. So component will mount does have access to the get default props and get initial state. And that makes sense because they both happen first. In our component lifecycle, the component has now rendered to the DOM. So we can see it on the browser, in the page, and the DOM exists. Our button exists, we can click it and the count will increment and the component will get rendered again. The next thing to happen is a method called component did mount. Again, which is a function. So this is number five, and this happens only once. And of course, after the component is rendered after component has rendered. Within that method, I'm simply gonna console.log component has rendered. So we'll see that in the console. Component did mount has access to props, it has access to state, and it also has access to the DOM because the DOM now exists. Console.log out this.state and a console.log this.props, which is empty, so we'll see both of those. And then using the React DOM library, which we've used to use the render method, this has a lot more methods in it. We're gonna use one of those called find DOM node. We're gonna pass in this and this method here so the react dom library and the find dom node method is simply going to be console.logged and this method simply finds the dom node that you pass it and this the keyword this is our component so all of this so our life cycle component so we're going to console.log out that component that dom element Save this and head on back over to the browser. Check out the console and there we go. So default props, initial state, mounting, rendered, component has rendered. So this is our component did mount method. We then have our state and our properties, which are empty. We then have the component itself, so the button. So that is the React DOM library and the console log of the component itself. So, get the default props, we get the initial state, the component mounts, the component renders, and we then have component did mount, where you can access the DOM, the state, and the props. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the state, props, and DOM, just so we've got component has rendered. And we'll continue looking at the lifecycle methods in the next video. Thanks for watching.
If you enjoyed my video, please like, share and subscribe. If you've got any comments, suggestions or ideas for videos, leave them in the comments below. Send me a tweet at CodeWithTim or send me an email, codewithtim at gmail.com.